Who needs more AI news? It's unbelievable, but I do. Though I read about 150 newsletters each week, I still need more AI news. And you know why? Kevin Scott, CTO of Microsoft, inspired me to do that. He said that we've got capabilities overhang. What does it mean? Actually, it's pretty simple. It means that we barely scratched the surface of what LLMs are capable of. And not only LLMs, large language models, the modality of text, but also video, audio, images. All this multi-model world we're driving in is immense, but we haven't even scratched 1% of it. So with this news, I want to share with you the wow moments that I had reading AI news last week. What is AI in our real life? What it helps with? What actually is AI? in our real world. How do we use it? To inspire you, to give you an understanding and to make it more visible how AI changes our world. Let's start. The first news is also from Microsoft. And I think that this session led by John Link chemistry lead in Microsoft was highly underappreciated. You know what they did? John Link revealed a breakthrough cooling discovery by AI in just 200 hours. They not only discover this new coolant in under 200 hours, they also took it and implemented it in the real laboratory. Why this coolant is also so special? Because it's PFAS free and it means it is free from forever chemicals often used in electronics coolant. We took one of the most promising candidates and synthesized it. So we can see there my coolant and we dropped a standard PC in it and it's running Forza Motorsport and it is keeping the temperature stable with no fans. When do you need coolants? When you run your compute in any data center. So if you can imagine the amount of compute we're running right now with LLMs and how much toxic stuff is getting with it into our Earth, this discovery is a breakthrough that will help our Earth and our data centers, allowing us use more AI for better stuff. This innovation slashes environment risks while boosting efficiency. It did sound like some science fiction stuff, but the excitement of John Link that was palpable. And by that, I understood that this is a real thing. Now to Google, which also had a conference last week, Google I.O. So they introduced AI mode. And if you imagine how much you interact with Google, how much you interact with Gmail, how much of our lives are in this browser and all these products, now the AI mode actually connects everything together that Google provides and also it makes search, it brings search to a different level. Let me show you. So AI mode, ask anything. Turn this experiment on and off. Yeah, it's on. Okay, try AI mode. So if I plan a trip to uh, Massachusetts, somewhere around Green Mountain with my five kids and my husband for a soccer tournament, what should we do and see around considering that I have four active boys and one toddler, toddler girl, right? Yeah. So here it is. Kicking off, 10 searches. It sounds like you have an exciting trip planned to Massachusetts, is that right? And it gives me a few suggestions where to go. Kid-friendly attractions, family-friendly restaurants, perfect. And the farms with you pick fruit. Okay, that's actually works good. Okay, let's start the new one. How about, hey. I'm writing about how we use AI in real life. Can you give me free wow AI news from the last Week, May 18, May 23, right? That's right. So, okay, here are three wow AI news from the past week. Microsoft envisions AI agents working together. Great, they actually suggested agentic web, which was very good narrative. I loved it. Second one, AI powered autonomous weapons development. Hmm. Paul Lucky, the founder of Oculus, is now developing AI powered autonomous weapons for the US military. I don't really like such uh, news because, like, we haven't yet seen the actual build stuff, right? It's just that it's under development. When I'm thinking about wow news, 
in terms of implementation of AI, I want to see how it works now, today. And the first one is a rock chatbot spreads misinformation. I think this is actually news from last week. So it gives us something, but knowing much more about AI, I would say this is not really the most wow news from the last week. Users can now engage in multi-step queries with contextual answers. However, with ads being integrated into AI responses, questions, I have questions. Will this enhance user experience or compromise the purity of information? Recently, before AI, we've seen that Google search because of ads became not really unusable, but a lot of people started using it less. With AI mode, with the capabilities of AI, you can receive all the information possible. So how will they deal with ads? That's a great question. UBS deploys AI financial avatars. You might think it's nothing, but they use AI-generated avatars of their analysts to deliver research insights via video. And that frees up a lot of time for analysts to do some other substantial work. I think it's a little thing, but it actually shows you the huge cut of human time that was spent on sometimes repetitive stuff. You know, Google also introduced Flow, an interface where you can use their image model and their video model to create cool videos. One special thing about it is, is that the characters, the people that you created with this tool can talk. And when you watch demos, this is pretty incredible. Isn't this just crazy? <laughs> What's crazy? People think we're fake. I would still call it a big promise because what we have now, if you use Flow, and I'll show you in a second, it's not that much you can do. On the paid version, which I'll also show you, you can do a little more, but still, it's more of a promise than a real thing. So let me show you how that works. Create with Flow, let's do that. I have a pro account. I think I can use only VO2, not VO3, but let's start. This is my first project that I made. It's okay, but the flow didn't work. So let's try something new. Let's take one of the videos. Let's try this prompt uh, created from one of the VO3 videos. It will start working. We need to wait. The other thing that actually was surprising for me, and I think it's telling a lot, was that during the fire chat at Google I.O., that was supposed to be between Alex Kantrovitz and um, Demis Hassabis, the third person came to the stage and was Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google. We all heard that he started to work much more again because of AI, he is much more involved. But this unannounced appearance and him being on a stage as a boss, that just shows you how strong he feels about this new AI race. And one thing he said, he expected Facts for Demis Hassabis and Google DeepMind to achieve AGI first. I think this is his objective and he's super strict about it. Okay, let's see what VO2 flow showed us. Let's see. <laughs> That's actually funny. <laughs> the funniest part is that the pilot seats with her back to the window. Okay, let's try this one. I don't know if it can have, I think Aveo 3 only can have voice. Let's choose this one, extend a bird bird crushes into the plane window, breaking it. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we have now. Very intense, very intense. Where's the bird? Ooh. Okay, let's extend this one, right? That's the weirdest part about this. So it's extending the first um, video, not the second one. And the bird that crush the window lands on the female pilot's lap. Something is happening, they were intense, they're completely off. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's not what I expected. Yeah, so we can tell it sucks. We can probably take this video and arrange. Here is the bird that didn't exist and then suddenly a bird exists but on his shoulder as a colorful crow. Flow from Google is a big promise, but it's not there yet. At least 
on the pro subscription. Maybe next week I'll make a demo from the ultra uh, subscription that costs $249 a month, I think. Everything for my readers and viewers. Tell me what you think and what you are excited about.